Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is the last day of the month of September. Praise God. The month of mercy, God said to us. And God has been showing his mercy. And let me tell you this truth. Today is not going to be an exception. He's releasing mercy in your life today. If you will believe him. Praise God. I've been sharing a lot on God's mercy. All these messages, all these truths is for you to take good advantage of it. Praise God. And, and so listen, today, can you just open your heart? Even as we ask God for our daily bread, tell yourself, Lord, this last day, I'm going to take all the mercy that I needed or that belonged to me for this month of September. This month of September. I'm going to receive all of it today. Just in case I missed anything. Remember we talked about time last week. It's still working on your behalf. Praise God. Are you ready? Release your faith now and say, Father, I demand for every benefit, even my daily bread today. And Lord, I receive all the mercy that was due me for the month of September. None of it will go without being fulfilled in my life. So I receive them from your hands, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. The Bible says, if we pray according to his will, he hears us. And how else would you know if something is the will of God? than when Jesus said, pray like this. <laughs> Jesus definitely was telling us the will of the Father when he told us, ask God for your daily bread. Brothers and sisters, the mercy of God is available. Our team scripture has been Psalm 119 and verse 64. The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. The earth is full of God's mercy. Everywhere you turn, there is mercy. And, and, and throughout this whole month, I've been showing you the different aspects of God's mercy. Can you, you see, sometimes this is one, one of the things that affects people from enjoying the mercy of God. They think they have to qualify for it. I'll tell you the truth. Mercy doesn't look at your qualification. Mercy look at your desire and how well you act. Now, remember, let me use this opportunity to, to tell you tonight, by 12 midnight, throughout tomorrow, we'll be having a monthly um, fast. We call it the 24 hours fasting and prayer, but we pray according to the watches. Okay, so the first meeting is going to be 12 midnight. And listen, we are launching ourselves into a very unique month, the month of October. And he said, the Lord had said to me that the month of October is the month of prayer. And when the Lord said that to me, I'm going to be sharing these things with you tomorrow, even tonight during the monthly prayer uh, meeting. I'm going to be sharing the things that the Lord have told me, the pattern the month is going to go. But let me tell you this. The mercy of God is so available. It's so available. Do you want it? That's the only question. Do you want it? Now, when you want something from God, you don't start asking yourself how well you qualify for it. No, you'll be hitting yourself. I mean, you, you just be cheating yourself if you start asking those questions because mercy doesn't look at your qualification. Mercy looks at what you want. You remember that, that blind man who was crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus went to him and said, what do you want me to do for you? Imagine if the man had said, I want money. But what did the man say? That I may receive my sight. That's what I'm shouting. That I may receive my sight. It was so good for him that his mind Rather, his eyes were single. And Jesus said, receive your sight. And he began to see. 
Praise God. He saw. Because he demanded the mercy of Jesus didn't go and say, how did you become blind? What happened to you? No. What do you want me to do for you? I hear the Lord ask you the same question. What do you want me to do for you? What's going to be your response today? See, everyone who received mercy from God just acted when they needed to. I remember sharing in our last sweet incense. Hezekiah, I know I shared this with you last week. Hezekiah prayed. Not so long a prayer. A short one. How do I know it's a short prayer? Because the Bible said Isaiah prophesied to him and left immediately. And then the Bible said while Isaiah was still in the courts, the temple courts, you know where the temple court is? I'll tell you. When you study the book of Esther, you remember Esther when she was she needed to appear before the king and, and she risked her life. Now, she appeared in the court. See? And, and now that's where if you are not approved of, they may kill you. You remember also when the king woke up from his sleep and was thinking, look, there's somebody I need to show mercy. And I said, who is in the court? And they say, oh, um, what's his name? Haman is there. And say, oh, send him in. Now, Isaiah left the king maybe from his bedroom because he was sick. So let's assume he was lying down on his bed. So Isaiah left him in the room. And then while he was still in the courts, he's not left the palace yet. So think about the length of prayer this man prayed. Not so long a prayer. But what did that prayer do? The prayer caused God to move time backwards. And the Bible never told us that Hezekiah was a man of prayer. You understand what I'm talking about? But the one prayer he prayed, with a focused heart, he got an answer that normally would look impossible. God didn't only heal him. God, the, the significance of God turning the, you know, turning the arm of time, okay? Turning time backwards. You know, like we say, if I can turn back the hand of time, Hezekiah showed us it's possible. It's possible. And the verdict of God concerning his life was changed. Now, if the verdict of God can change, now you know who God is. I am the Lord. I change not. Uh-huh. He changed for Hezekiah. I want you to think about it. He changed because of Hezekiah. When David went to challenge Goliath, let me tell you this. He didn't go as a macho man. He didn't go as a man of war. He went depending fully on the mercy of God. But you see, I, I shared these thoughts with you also. That the mercy of God is available for you to take advantage of. It's there. It's there. So David knew. This guy is an uncircumcised Philistine. Is there a possible way that he can defeat me? A child of covenant. And David said, no. If there is no way God will side this man to defeat me, why is everybody quiet and afraid? Why can't somebody rise up to challenge this man? I'm ready to go. Wow. What was he looking at? He wasn't looking at his own might. He wasn't looking at his own strength. He was looking at the mercy of God that was available. And he did. We never read that God spoke to any of them. We never, even when the king was trying to discourage him, say, young man, you're such a young man. This guy, he's been a warrior from his youth. Are you sure? He says, sir. I will go. 
Now, David came about that courage because of the mercy of God he's enjoyed in the past. Now, that's another thing with God. He does little things in your life to prepare you for the big one. Sometimes all those little testimony of, of you not having money and someone just showing up and say, hey, I'm going your way. Like, ah, how did this happen? What made this man? You know, sometimes we don't analyze when things happen. We just say, ah, thank God. Because we think most times it's a fluke. We think it just, it just happened. You don't realize that every miracle that happens in your life is well calculated. It is well calculated by heaven and delivered to you. God knew what he was doing. So you see, when David had to challenge the lion, when he had to challenge the bear, God was watching. And David figured out something from his challenge and defeat of the lion and the bear. He noticed, he noticed something that this thing was not by my strength. He knew. He knew that there was an unseen hand that was working on his behalf in those two instances. He knew. He, he had come to that conclusion that I'm not alone. Yes. Now, when, when God said in, in Hebrews chapter 13, he has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Yeah, what's he doing in your life? Now, that's not a New Testament scripture. Because Hebrews was quoting what he had said right from what we call the Old Testament. See? Now, he said the reason he said that to us is so that we will boldly say, the Lord is our helper. We will not fear what man will do unto you. So, practically, God showed David that I am with you. What is he doing with you? He's there to release grace upon your life. That's why he's with you, to release grace upon your life. That's what he's doing in your life. So that mercy is there to release. Now when I say grace, grace and mercy, they work together. Because mercy is the determination of God. Then grace is the supply of strength and favor in your life. So mercy is what gives you the approval. See, by mercy, God looks at you and say, you can have it all. Then grace is when you now take that thing. I come on now. <laughs> it's the last day of the month. What mercy are you going to take advantage of today? Are you going to consider yourself going down? Are you going to consider your business? Oh, you've looked at the past months. The, the, you're, you're walking right into red. You've looked at your finances. You've started going back to your savings because the income is not commensurate with your, uh, with your expenses. Okay. You, you've looked at all these things. Things are going down gradually. You, you've been telling yourself every month, this month's going to be better. This month's going to be better. And then when you say that, you're not saying that because you trust in the mercy of God. You're saying that because you feel by some means, you know, you're going to be able to calculate this thing right. No, it's not about how well you can calculate it. It's about how well you believe in God's mercy. God's mercy is available. He is with you. These are the things David thought about that he said, the same hand that was upon me when I challenged that lion and the bear, I see the same hand is upon me. I will defeat this Goliath. And he went. The king, after saying that he couldn't stop him, said, all right, you know what, David? Why don't you take my spear? Take my armor, take my... David tried it. Not, not that he was disobedient and said, I, I, I can go without it. No, he tried it and realized that, sir, it's not right for me to carry a body that I've never carried before into a faith journey. There are things God have done in your life. There are times God showed up in your life without you qualifying for it. There are places you have entered without you knowing anybody and you know you entered there by the grace of God. 
Now you are the same person walking helter skelter, looking for who will help you, looking for a qualification you need so that you can enter another place. Can't you remember that the God who took you into that place at first? Now, this doesn't mean you shouldn't pay attention to certain details. Pay. But listen, it is not by those qualifications that God... Now, men, looks at, men look at the outward, you know that, but God looks at the heart. So, men will not respond the way God will respond to you. But guess what? This is the good part of it. The God who can respond to you knows how to turn the hearts of men for your sake. What it is that if your way please the Lord, the Lord will turn even your enemies to be at peace with you. So don't be too conscious of pleasing your enemies or pleasing men. Rather, be very conscious of pleasing God. Because when God is pleased with you, he can turn the heart of men towards you. So which one would you rather go for? Oh, you're walking in a place and, and, and they, they just feel, oh, there's this boss that if you don't please him, if he doesn't like you, uh, you're in trouble. Oh, everybody's saying that. Then you think about it. And you know that the, the, the journey to pleasing that man is just not right. And, and many people have put themselves into unholy circumstances because of situations like this. But hey, you, you hearing that thing and saying, okay, I've heard you. You go back to the Lord and say, Lord, I'd rather please you than please men. Why? You see, your reason for doing things is so important. Because sometimes believers make those mistakes and they are trapped by their words. Instead of me to please that man, I'd rather resign. You will resign. Because that's the option you gave. So when you end up resigning or forced to resign, don't go about saying, but where was God? He was right there. You didn't choose him as an option. You said you will resign. So what should I have said? You go before the Lord and say, Father, you see that man over there? He's a creation of you. And number two, he lives on your earth. So I'm going to please you, Lord, by doing everything that you command me to do. And you are going to turn that man's heart to be at peace with him. Why don't you rather pray that way? And believe the words you speak. Believe it. Now, okay, I haven't prayed that way. What should I do next? Listen to the voice of God. Understand his precept. Listen, when a, when a child of God is fired from an organization, it's not right. Is it when a child of God is fired? I mean, I mean fired. Now, some, some, I know sometimes you say, eh, but sometimes that firing have caused something good to happen. Listen, you shouldn't be fired. You shouldn't be fired. Now, if you get to that point where you are actually fired, I'll tell you the truth. Either one, you have not kept the precept of God. Or two, you have walked in disobedience to God. Maybe God was telling you to leave that place and you were dragging, ah, if I leave now, what would I do? Where will I start from? You know, and then God looked at you and said, ah, you don't want to obey my instruction. Meanwhile, the thing I want to do with your life is pending. All right, I know what to do. Um, Satan. Yes, sir. God uses Satan. People don't know that. Satan comes. Say, yes, sir. Um, I, I need you to do something. That my son in that organization. I want him out. Ah! Satan is always glad to do God's bidding. I'm telling you the truth. He did it for Job. He did it for King Ahab. You remember when God said, who would deceive Ahab to go to war so that he would go and die there? And the Bible said, there came a spirit who do you think that spirit was? An angel? A spirit of God? No, that was Satan that showed up. At least Job's case should tell you that he has access to that gathering. He has. I say, ah, he doesn't have access again. Who told you he doesn't have access again? There is no scripture that says the access have been blocked. You know, because who want to think in Christ Jesus, ah, hey, there is no scripture that tells you that that access has been blocked. So God uses him. Why would God send Satan to his child? Yes, because the child is disobedient and needs to be taught a lesson. 
Ah, well, how would God, how would God, Pastor, well, are you not saying, you know those things people used to say in those days, that ah, I'm sick because God is teaching me a lesson. I don't know what you're thinking of. But you better learn that lesson very fast and get out of that sickness. So does God send sickness to people? Listen, I know God sends Satan to his children. I know. Now, even Jesus, remember the Bible says he was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And you see Job's case, then you see King Ahab's case. He now said, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophet. So when you, that's why I said, when a child of God is fired, you get to that point where you were actually fired. Either you didn't walk in God's precept or you disobeyed God. Now, I can't go into details concerning, but let us sink in your heart because it's the truth. Praise God. My time is up. Listen, may God release great mercy upon your life today. May he remember you and his plans for you for the month of September. And by his mercy, let him pack all and release to you this night, this day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I really want to see you tonight. The Zoom, now the meeting is via Zoom. The details are on the screen. Please don't miss it. Join us and let's begin to, oh, I see a glorious month of October. I see glorious. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm looking forward to seeing you tonight. God bless you. Bye.